I feel a sense of optimism and anticipation, uh, but also a recognition that this is a very big decision. Unraveling a 44-year relationship is a complicated business. There's a lot of hard work ahead of us. I am absolutely confident that it's the right decision and that we can look forward to a bright future outside the EU, but there will be bumps along the road. There will be setbacks over, over the coming months, inevitably when we've taken such a huge decision. Theresa May's um, statement was just cliché after cliché after cliché after platitudinous waffle. Uh, I, I thought it, she really let the country down today because there just was not enough in there for anybody to bite on, understand what we're really intending to do. And it just feels a bit as if um, she's waiting for something to come along. And I just don't think that's the right way to approach no these negotiations. Between the UK and the EU, but it's not going to be political independence. Uh, relocating ourselves away from Europe. We're leaving the EU, we're not leaving Europe. If you've been locked inside a cramped and dark dungeon and you step out into the sunlight, it, it's going to be a fit, bit intimidating. You're going to have to learn how to use some of the faculties you were not using for a long time. We as a country have got to rediscover the art of self-governance, not just the technical details about how to make trade policy, but also to realise that actually when the public is able to hold public policymakers to account, anything is possible. It is possible to improve society, the economy and the condition of humankind. We can do that now. We're no longer beholden to the idea that ministers come back from Brussels and say, you can't do it because Europe won't allow it. I think it's something that is really, really important. And one of the messages I've been going out talking about is this idea that we have to put aside the division. And we have to, because actually Brexit shows that emotions trumped evidence. And we can't have that as we go through this negotiated period. It's got to be about a realistic negotiation period. And all of us have got to pull in one direction. The thing I found very peculiar about her speech is it was almost, I love, the, it was such a pro-European speech saying I love you we want we need to live together in harmony and partnership but by the way I'm going to leave and go down the road and live with somebody else it was a very peculiar speech um, and I don't understand that sort of the, the dichotomy that we're faced with I mean I think we have a, a situation in the UK where we have a I think a lot of it will be rather boring negotiations by technical experts behind the scenes. And occasionally the heads of state and government will come together with the occasional flashpoint. I'm cynical enough to think there might even be the occasional manufactured, choreographed flashpoint because everyone, every politician likes to tell his or her domestic audience, we had a fight and I won. Uh, but as to where we go in substantive terms, it's far too early to say. We've got the letter from Mrs May, which I've just seen and skim read. What we have to wait for now is what the European, the member states have to say in response. And after that, they start to negotiate about what they're going to negotiate, and then they'll start the negotiations itself.